welcome to this sports story it is a country with diverse sporting potential and we look to dive into some wonderful stories through our series the unsung sporting tales we have with us today a fantastic representative from the sporting ecosystem we have with us a badminton champion ashwini bhat this is your host meeda kattige hello ashwini how are you i'm fine how are you i'm good too thank you so to give you all a brief introduction about her she is the current national number 1 in the women's and mixed doubles category in india she won a silver medal in mixed doubles and a bronze in women's doubles in the maldive international challenge in 2019 the 20 year old has been playing badminton for over a decade now and has an endless list of achievements at the national and state level she is a fantastic doubles player dominant in the girls doubles throughout her junior years and now in seniors category 2 and she is also an excellent singles player so ashwini how has the past 6 months been amidst the lockdown uh, it has been great because i feel i've got the opportunity to attend few online classes from college something new compared to our uh, tight schedule like just going and playing and doing uh, attending the tournaments and all so it was a different experience from not uh, being involved so much in uh, badminton of course yes in terms of fitness and other stuff i was maintaining that thing along with it i was uh, focusing even in the college activities okay that's nice good to hear so could you tell us about the moment or the time when you felt that badminton is something which you actually want to pursue professionally Okay, so I don't remember exactly because I think the uh, I started when I was around seven years, and uh, my parents had put up um, uh, me in a summer camp then, and uh, I started in two thousand seven. So of course, like the coaches out there just said that I have a good uh, game and I have good wrist work because I picked up the techniques really fast. So they. It, they in fact told me that it would be great if I could uh, pursue this as a profession because they because they could see that I had something in me. So I think that's the thing which led me. And of course, you know, like that time I thought, like, why not give it a try? Okay, that's yeah. nice. Good to hear that. So. uh you been number 1 in your junior years too in your under 15 under 17 under 19 and have been a really dominant player in the national and state circuit and again this march uh, 2020 you became number 1 in the seniors category too so you had a really consistent performance staying in the top so what according to you has enabled you to have such consistency con- such consistency at such a high level and what motivates you to keep doing that again and again i mean it must be a really huge effort to do so yeah so i totally agree that uh, i was dominant during uh, my juniors uh, and of course the mid junior category until 19 and of course even now Uh, I feel it's very uh, challenging because I think I personally feel that once you step onto the court, you have to uh, you know show your duty as you know you have to play your best and give it all when you enter the court. And uh, I personally feel that I am not a person who cheats a partner or cheats myself. So when I get onto the court, I make sure I give my hundred percent. And uh, one more thing is that. i i feel that the public only remembers uh, uh uh the athletes or the players who you know secure first or who been not not anybody who secured second because i think it's still fine if you are in studies and you have some rank and all that but in sports it always what matters is to come first so and uh, yeah so it's been challenging and uh, i wanted to prove myself in the circuit that i am the best and uh, i could do it and i'm really happy for what i've achieved in the national and the state circuit as so far and hopefully one day i want to become number 1 in the world as well very true ashwini very true i mean yeah i 
Should I agree with you? I mean, it's really when you are on the court, you just have to give it your all. That's truly an amazing feeling that mm. you have when you go on court. Yeah. So, what is a player that you idolize, and why? Okay, so I idolize Saina Nehwal because I feel that her uh, techniques, her style, and a lot of uh, attitude which she uh, showcases herself and she gets on. the court like her confidence i feel that you know i idolize her and i really love her game and so far i think she's for me at least i feel she's the best and uh, she's beaten almost all the top uh, chinese and uh, yeah so i think badminton came up because of her because she was the first one to secure uh, um, a bronze in olympics so Oh, uh, she was. She is not what she is. My um, uh, uh, idol. Truly, truly, I think especially sh- mm-hmm. she is like kind of the flag bearers of uh, the modern badminton in India. Her achievements that she had early yes. in this decade is truly phenomenal, which has brought yes, brought, yes. brought badminton to light in India. It's been quite a journey for you, right from your junior years to achieving the number one ranking in seniors. So how has your family support been all this while in your journey how important uh, a role has have they played yeah so uh, my parents have been very supportive since the time i started playing uh, my mom was a practicing doctor she just left her job to support me like she travels with me to all the tournaments um, i think both sized a lot to support me and uh, my father is retired now but uh, he he's an engineer and uh, he supports me financially so uh, all the travels the hotel all the other expenses everything my dad does and my mom travels along with me and i think i'm very lucky to have a wonderful parent like them who supports me like this truly i mean i think especially had soft your mom and your dad too for the kind of sacrifices they made to support you in your career i think it's after all you know a team work which does help an athlete um be successful in their pursuits the amount of support that you need is truly incredible yeah everyone loves winning i mean most people get to see the glamorous side of sports when people win and athletes win and saina wins and sindhu wins but i'm sure the amount of training that goes into achieving that and the struggles that you go through is immense and probably only the athlete knows you know all the struggles and sacrifices could you just take us through the challenges that you have faced the struggles the sacrifices that you have made to be there to achieve what you've done yeah so uh, as you said i think uh, if if you have to succeed in a sports career or attend it my own uh, family functions like my cousins uh, my my relatives weddings or any occasions in my family and that has been very very uh, i think one of the major sacrifices i would say and uh, of course like it's not like a normal life how other um, other normal individuals live like partying and hanging around because you have to achieve something so yeah i do have my school friends and uh, uh, we make sure that we meet at least on each other's birthdays that we treat and we meet and uh, uh talking about the coaching and other stuff it's not just we have to train for one hour or anything because i play professionally and i have a dream uh, to you know represent india in 2024 olympics so um it's not just one hour or two hours training it is like a whole day uh, or a half day or uh, uh, schedule so if i start in the morning at 7:30 then probably i would be back home by 2:30 and and um, in the evenings i hit the gym but of course due to the covid situation very difficult to go to gym and all so that's not there but pretty much i make sure that i'm fit some or the other way so there are a lot of challenges it could be with your food 
uh, you can't eat as a normal person eats. You have to maintain a certain diet, which is full of high proteins, and you need to maintain how you are. It's not just if you're one, you're ranked one once, and then you drop down suddenly, because you have to maintain that social image amongst all of them. So there are a lot of sacrifices if you want to pursue something which you really want to achieve, especially you know sports car or any other field which has so much of competitive uh, you know uh, environment. Very true. I think this is an important uh, takeaway for those aspiring athletes who really want to achieve something. No pain, no gain. Yes. I think uh, you might be excited to watch even Carolina Marin's documentary. That's. Uh, going yeah. to be released. It's on the same lines. Yes. I literally had goosebumps when I saw the trailers. Exactly. I think she didn't portray much about how she, you know, got that injury and her rehab mm. uh, process and she wanted to party and all that stuff. I had never seen that. We just, uh, according to the news, whatever came out was just that she had injury. She's doing yeah. her strength and all of that never knew what is actually going in her mind I think her coach is also an incredible character by looking at that teaser you know he must be a mastermind yeah to have molded her that way to be an extraordinary champion so to our viewers uh, Ashwini is also a very talented singles player you know she used to play uh, singles I think until her under 19 years and she was among the best but then she gradually made a shift to playing only doubles. Uh, you had a really long partnership with one of those from your junior years. And it was very successful also. But then you made certain decisions to shift to singles and then now back to doubles. As an athlete, there must be many times when you face such dilemmas uh, where you had to take critical decisions and it must have been tough. So looking back... How important do you think it is to take such decisions uh, for your career? And how do you deal with such tough situations? Okay, so um, you said that I was a very good singles player and then I shifted to doubles. All of these decisions, I couldn't take it alone. Of course, it were my own decisions, but uh, I consulted my coaches because I think they are the best uh, well-wishers after our parents because they are the ones who, you know, guide us the correct path. So there were the people who told me, like, it would be better if you go to the doubles uh, stream because you have uh, good achievements in that. So that's why I took this. I didn't have any kind of dilemma or as in anything like that. Okay. Initially, I felt, yeah, I was doing good in singles as well but they made me realize that you have uh, good uh, techniques and other uh, uh, characteristics which would give you a lot more laurels to you in doubles as well so that's that was totally from my coach's uh, side and uh, if, if there's any kind of situation where I feel uh, you know the dilemma or anything like that only thing I do is I just trust myself and I have that confidence that if I do, if I want to achieve something, I just believe in myself. And the next person who I believe is everything is left to God. He will know who, uh, he will know what is good and what is bad. So it's, I just do these two things. Okay. That's yeah. a really great insight from you to, you know, believe and trust in yourself and yeah. be power above everybody all. And then to really talk to people, consult your coaches, your well-fishers and take a decision and keep mentally stable as well so that it doesn't have an adverse effect on your career as well. So um, there's always been uh, news about the need for more support for doubles players. As we all know, initially India has been very good at singles since the beginning. And doubles have been picking up quite well now. So how do you think the doubles category has evolved over the years? Because you've been playing doubles for quite some time. So what are the changes that have taken? So uh, Badminton Association of India has been very supportive. 
and uh, i think doubles in india is coming up because there are uh, 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 there are few pairs which are performing really well like uh, of course the main doubles players in india right now are uh, ashwini sikki who coming up and followed by few other players like sanjana santosh pooja and uh, purvisha make now all of them are within the world 50 and a few other players as well including me so i think there's been a lot of uh, importance towards it because many people consider doubles as their main events now i think most of the players who ever have been playing singles in the junior category have uh, make sure that they play even doubles it's not just singles means singles they've even playing doubles so i think that's that's one of the major things and uh, bai also has a lot of uh, double tournaments mixed double tournaments and of course national tournaments and uh, all these leagues and pbl and international tournaments all of them i think that's one of the things which uh, you know has led to um, a lot of changes i would say and uh, talking about the doubles thing i think doubles came up really well when ashwini and jwala gutta uh played the quarters if i'm not wrong in uh, uh, olympics pre quarters or quarters in olympics they also and won I, commonwealth medals yeah yeah commonwealth medals and all of that so i think that brought a lot of changes towards uh, people thinking that even doubles is something you can opt for so i think th- those were the changes which were brought and it's not just singles is uh, a great game you know equal importance uh should be given to doubles as well i would say because uh, in any team event it's like two singles and three doubles especially in 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 events where there's only women's category it's two singles and three doubles so yeah so that's uh, that's what i would say great i think soon we'll also get to see another ashwini making india proud in the doubles category <laughs> thank you i wish you all the best for that also thank fact you. for our viewers ashwini uh, was selected for the preparatory camp for the thomas and uber cup which is to be held in denmark in the first week of october she narrowly missed uh, making it to the team but nevertheless it's a great achievement in itself so. thank you thank you so much yeah so uh, what are your goals uh, for your in your future and uh, what kind of support is crucial for players like you to achieve okay yeah, so um my goal is to represent india at the 2024 olympics and uh, probably get a medal mm-hmm. to get a medal for the country um and uh, yeah so to pursue or to get into the path to represent india in 2024 olympics we'll have to play a lot of uh, international uh, tournaments so that we get into the top 16 because the qualification for olympics is just top 16 so i want to get into the world top 16 so there'll be a lot of tournaments within the next 3 years which i'll have to be playing uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to get into the olympics um so of course there are a lot of expenses because if you will have to play 15 tournaments in a year it's pretty difficult for an individual family to support you so much because you need the travel the food and all the other uh, facilities uh, which will be required so a suggested or a well uh, supported uh, sponsorship would be very necessary for a player for me to uh, you know uh, get into the path of Tokyo, uh, sorry, not Tokyo, but uh, Paris Olympics. So that's the thing I would say. Because one, uh, like a, a build of a person, different uh, is different from others. Like one person would be thin, the other one would be very strong. So everyone has uh, a different build. So like physical trainers, uh, uh, personal trainers, or uh, you know, nutritionist, or the any other kind of support you need. is very crucial true true very much i think all the other aspects are equally important especially when you're preparing for a stage like olympics it's a it's not once in four years they say you know it's every day so right. you actually yeah. have to prepare for olympics right from now yeah it's great again wish you all the good luck with that as well and we really yeah. hope you 
can gather the support all that you need to be fulfilling those dreams and like i said of course we would like to see more players representing india at the international yeah. stage i think there's no prouder moment than that for an athlete exactly yeah so i would just like to add on to this i sure. forgot to tell that uh, i've been shortlisted uh, for uh, the olympic uh, podium scheme which is supported tops. by sai yeah which is called tops um and there are around 27 athletes out of which i'm i'm one so i've been selected for both women's doubles and mixed doubles wonderful so yeah so it's road to 2024 olympics so great i think it's really great that you know um athletes uh, do seem to be getting uh, good support from the government as well it's it's really i think a morale booster as well apart from the kind of support you would actually get to fulfill your sponsorship or nutrition or physiotherapy physical training needs yeah great badminton is growing in the country what advice would you like to give aspiring badminton athletes yeah so i would just not say badminton because uh, uh anything which you would love to do please go ahead with that because i personally believe that you should do something which you really love like not force yourself in something which you don't like at all so like or love at all so of course if it's in badminton it's a growing sport and uh, you know it's the number two sport after cricket in india so growing very enormous. it's coming up because of uh, a lot of athletes like sindhu saina shrikant and all the top players ashwin punapa sikki all of them and uh, yeah so um as sports i would say not everything is uh, study you should even have something which could engage which should en- engage yourself which could maintain your health or keep you very uh, healthy or something like that so uh, yeah so choose a sport of your choice and uh, be very uh, serious and be very dedicated determined towards whatever you do and uh, hope you can do something really great in the near future thank you ashwini for your words of advice all the aspiring athletes out there and our viewers i think it's been a wonder- wonderful conversation with you giving us insight into insights into an, a life of an athlete uh, a top athlete with such consistency who aspires to play the olympics in 2024 it's really been great to have you on board with unsung sporting tales uh so we wish you all the very best for all your future endeavors thank you so much for being here today and thank you uh, to all of you us uh, on the sports to it stay tuned for much more exciting episodes and much more insights from the from the sporting world thank you thank you thank you so much for having me here it was really great speaking to people and i hope that whoever sees this would have a great time it's a great initiative and uh, yeah thank you so much